Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you all doing? Alhamdulillah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala amma ba'd. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassil li amri wa ahlul uqdata min lisan yafqahu qawli wa ja'al li wazira min ahli ameen ya rabbal alameen. So as moderator announced, my topic is a little sensitive. What's the fine line between core values of our religion that is Islam versus mainstream American liberal secular culture and the reason why this is difficult to understand especially now and why it is even complicated somehow is because of few reasons I will just mention three reasons and I'll just mention three points inshallah first the reasons why this topic is so sensitive and so complicated second how our social bias can affect the understanding of the religion and third what's the solution of saving us not crossing that fine line between the culture and religion yet to preserve our identity as American Muslim inshallah ta'ala why this topic is so complicated a large number of Muslims even you will see in this convention are immigrant Muslims right and we are minority and when you are in my when you are living as a minority then you have two different extreme reactions regardless of whatever minority you are from one extreme reaction is that if you do not abide by your religion then the next generation coming from you they will lose your religion it's just a matter of time you will dilute very easily you will blend very easily if you're not abiding by your religious guidelines that's one extreme that's why people have lost their faith in second third fourth generation coming here the other extreme we have seen in our communities is people are so afraid that they do not want to lose their religion naturally because in the deen and the islam so what they do they actually go into the other extreme and they try to enforce the cultural understanding of back home whether from pakistan from egypt or from somalia and what it does that your kids who are born and raised here or the second or third generation they are American they are not Pakistani they are not Egyptian they are not Somalis and what they will do eventually they won't have any interest in that culture and they will lose their identity so it's very important as a parents to give them what will stay with them even once we we'll depart this world and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion not any culture inshallah second reason why this topic is complicated American liberal secular culture versus our core values of Islam which are constant early fiqh scholars even address this issue between culture and religion there is a, actually a principle I am not teaching fiqh class I know but if you can take this agreed upon principle in Islamic law is al-ada muhakkama the translation is the local culture the local custom will be the basis of judgment in Islamic law as long as that culture that custom is in is not in a conflict with Islamic law should I give you example so all these scholars who brought this agreed upon principle they gave this example Allah says in Quran in Surah An-Nisa ayat number 19 Allah is talking to the husbands treat your wife treat your wife in a nice way ma'roof in a reasonable way what does it mean all these scholars say that if your wife is from different culture and the definition of being nice with her in that culture is different then you have to fulfill that so a wife from Pakistan Egypt Somalia might have a different expectation in terms of having nice behavior versus wife in America so you have to fulfill that expectation of being nice according to the local culture as long as you don't have to commit any haram are you are you with me did you see how this topic become complicated now Sharia is asking you on one end to consider some of the aspects of your local culture and that will become part of Islamic law and at the same time Sharia came to abolish some of the evil practices of the culture which goes against the morality defined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the fine line who will going to define that because most of us are not well equipped right 
you, then you will see some people are completely dilute or blend in this culture and then some people are putting themselves in isolated bubble so it's hard to see a fine balance between both of this and the third problem why this is so complicated culture versus religion how many of you are extremist here can you raise hand okay one brother is extremist okay how many of you are moderate here can you raise hand moderate most of you the problem is actually in this statistics right every one of us think we are moderate we are not falling either far left or far right right we are in the mainstream circle but the moment I will talk to you you will find out and I will find out we are actually inclined towards far left or far right right very few of us are in the actually circle of mainstream when a brother or sister in Muslim community when a leader in Muslim community speaks about this issue culture versus religion you know what happened if they are their inclination is on far left they will try to make everything halal on the name of culture and if brother or sister is speaking in Muslim community whose inclination personal inclination is towards far right they will try to make everything haram because they will say no no religion religion culture we don't want to mix even though Islam asks us to consider some parts of the culture so that's why it's extremely complicated discussion what is the fine line between what we have to take and where we do not have to compromise because it's firm constant value of Islam I'll tell you something very interesting this is second point before we can discuss solutions inshallah how our social bias can affect the understanding of Quran and Sunnah you know we all have social biases if I will ask you you might not agree with this but we all have social biases either you will be conservative or liberal either you'll be far left or far right either you will be or even from social angle either you will be from the feminist angle or from masculinist angle right patriarchy versus matriarchy we all have this whether you agree or not we all have social biases because we are raised in this community in this environment we watch Netflix I'm not talking about the haramness of it but we watch Netflix we watch all those movies we are going into these schools and liberal art colleges and we are shaped towards certain thinking process so we are either this or that as a Muslim as a Muslim my primary angle of looking at things whether I should oppose this or favor this that is bias right that is bias should come primarily from Quran and Sunnah what I should oppose what I should favor should not come from these social biases should come from Quran and Sunnah and the problem comes here brothers and sisters if my social bias let's take the example of liberalism let's say if liberalism is saying something which goes in line with Quran and Sunnah biggest mistake you will do you will say Islam is compatible and Islam have a leftist approach no that's a farther from truth there are few values where Islam might be compatible with these social biases of liberalism and conservatism but there are other values where Islam will completely disagree and what it does with our mentality now this is important when there is a conflict let's say between liberalism versus Islam instead of asking yourself why this particular ayah of the Quran why this one hadith is confusing to me maybe my worldview have some problem my social bias have some problem instead of doing that we will start doubting that ayah of the Quran we will start doubting that hadith that that ayah doesn't make sense actually wait a minute your worldview might not make sense go back to your worldview check your worldview don't try to change the message of Islam yeah you can change the style but don't change the message I'll give you one example before I can move to solutions inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says every scholar agree wala taqrabu zina zina is haram fornication is haram do you agree with this can you raise hand how many of you agree zina is haram alhamdulillah may Allah protect all of us and our kids from zina ameen ya rab if you are looking at this ayah from the liberal angle you might be uncomfortable uh, this restriction is going against my freedom going against personal choice this choice 
this freedom, these are the catchy words we use in this culture, right? All the time. Now, why Islam restrict sexuality in this regard? Why? Because Islam wants to promote family system. And for that, Islam says no. Even if that comes at the expense of restriction, we will do because Islam wants to promote family system. Is it clear? But now, a sound-hearted person will realize that a individual freedom need to be restricted, individual freedom need to be restricted to prevent individual or collective harm. Right? Just like if you have a car, can you drive 90 miles per hour? Uh, if you're Muslim, you can, but generally, no, I'm kidding. Can you drive 90 miles per hour? If you will, and if you got pulled over, can you say this to the cop? Actually, you know, in registration, it says Asif Hirani, my name. So it's my car, my choice. Can you say this? Like my body, my choice? Can you say this? No, it's, it's, America is built on freedom. I have freedom to drive 120 miles per hour. Your driving speed freedom need to be restricted, even though you are owner of the car. Otherwise, you will harm yourself or harm others. Is it clear? But there are other concepts like this, which are not clear because we are too emotional, maybe lack of knowledge, and we will tend to go either on far left or on far right, even on the issues of Islam. Before I can discuss solution, I will give you one more example to make sure this point is conveyed properly. The issue of, and some of you will be surprised why I brought this up, the issue of abortion in American politics. Is it sensitive? It's a sensitive issue right now, right? There is one position on far left, which is completely permissible. One position in far right, complete ban. And we, as a Muslim, lack of knowledge again, or maybe because we seek attention of the masses, we're going to say, oh, no, no, I think Islam says this, I think Islam says that, and we will going to go either with this side or that side, pro-life, pro-choice. What Islam exactly says? Islam says in the earlier days, earlier phase of pregnancy, generally by default it's haram because society will become dysfunctional if that becomes a normal practice, aborting a fetus. But if there are, there are circumstances, if there is a pressing medical need, pressing need, or there is an extreme necessity, haja or durura, then in early days of pregnancy, some of the earlier scholars gave permission with those reasons, if those reasons are there. Can, did, did you see Islam did not take complete liberal position? or complete conservative position, Islam have a unique position. And that's how Islam is in all the aspects. When you talk about women rights, oh, why women doesn't have freedom? Yes, Islam restricted freedom of women and Islam restricted freedom of men in certain angle. But we have to see the larger picture and master plan because there is no ultimate freedom. Who will going to define the harm to restrict the freedom? This society says it's human. We say it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the difference. Now let's come to the solution, inshallah. And this solution is actually geared towards how we sh can not only raise ourselves, but even raise our kids in this society so that they don't become diluted and eventually they will lose their identity and religion. We all want our kids to recite Quran like Rayyan, right? Who recited just a few minutes before, subhanAllah. First, first solution. I have seen this, subhanAllah, a issue, especially after the social media have evolved. First, prob first solution of this is that do not respond to one extreme from the other extreme. Please write this down. Do not respond to one extreme from the other extreme. That's a problem. At a foundational level, we have to. At a foundational level, if someone is doing shirk, we have to respond to tawheed. Yes or no? If someone is doing zina, we cannot do zina. We have to respond from nikah. But at the social cultural level, do not respond one extreme from the other extreme because both of them have issues. If you see most of the Muslims, if some of, if, if some of us are coming from some Muslim countries and you have problem there from conservatism, then just because you have an allergy from conservatism, do not embrace liberalism here. Because the problem is you will get rid of conservatism but you will have completely new issues because you embrace liberal, liberalism. Just embrace Islam because they have their own set of rules. Second, second issue or second solution. Differentiate between mainstream, secular, liberal, American culture versus the core values of Islam which 
doesn't change at all. The secondary values which will change, but the core values will never change. Fundamental principle teachings. Sometimes it can get blurry, and you need to figure out by discussing with your family and taking knowledge and discussing with these scholars and coming to these conferences to basically deconstruct those things. But there's a fine line, do not let it get blurred. So for example, if you see in a mainstream media, a guy named Muhammad or a sister named Fatima or Zainab or a hijabi sister, the moment you will see a Muhammad or a Muhajjiba sister, what comes in your mind? Muslim, right? If they are saying something which is extremely haram by agreement, then it is our responsibility to have this balanced approach that on one angle you are appreciating the representation of Islam on the mainstream media, but on the other hand, you, on the other hand, you are actually knowing the harms that this individual is causing, not only to you, but even to your next generation. And you should talk to your kids about that also. Because otherwise, the silent messages will, t will be very deadly. Uh, third, third, this entire mainstream culture, American culture, and if you don't figure out what's the fine line, can lead to the organic pluralism. Now, pluralism is, in a, in a, in a, what I'm talking about, that if you believe in Allah, if you are Muslim, it's fine, you're going to Jannah. If you worship Jesus, you're still going to Jannah. If you don't believe in Allah, if you are atheist, you're still going to Jannah. All of us are equal. Have you ever heard this argument? And the problem with that, the problem with that, whenever kids will listen from us, these kinds of arguments, they will say, then why I have to live a restrictive lifestyle? Because Islamic lifestyle is surrounded by haram and halal. Because other religions, somewhat other religions, have submitted to the liberalism. Islam actually is the only religion right now which is opposing the idea of atheism and liberalism in a proper context. It poses a challenge. So if you will say this, your next generation will say that what's the point of staying Muslim then if everyone is fine? You need to respect and honor everyone because that's what we are commanded. But at the same time, you should be confident enough in the deen and Allah al-Islam that the only religion, the only system of life which is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by submitting to Him, that is Islam. Yes, I will respect you as a human being, but I will disagree and love. I would not compromise on my principle. And we have to do this as a parent, otherwise our kids will be taken away by this flood. Tell me one thing. I have three kids, alhamdulillah. If I do not speak Arabic or Urdu with them, will they ever able to learn Arabic or Urdu? No. Will I, if I do not speak English with them, will they ever able to speak English? Why? That's a predominant language. Let's apply to the system of life also. If I, as a parent, am not teaching my kids about Islam, and the predominant worldview, predominant style, lifestyle is completely godless. Then eventually, eventually, the predominant lifestyle, the flood, the hurricane, the strong winds will take our kids. And that's what we need to do, inshallah ta'ala. The last few things before I can end, inshallah, the last few things. We, when we are introducing people to Islam, when we are introducing our kids to Islam, Many times our kids ask us those questions which we do not even know. Actually, that's the topic of next speaker, Dr. Suzy Smile. She's fantastic in terms of uh, advising about the uh, parents, how to raise kids. Personally, I look uh, for those advices, subhanAllah. When kids ask you questions, whether they are tough questions or you have not done your homework, do not give them an incorrect answer. Or do not change the original message of Islam. Change your style. The way you're talking to a 10-year-old will be different than the way you're talking to a Yale professor. I get it. But do not change the original message of Islam. Because religion have the ability to answer all these spiritual, intellectual, emotional questions. But the culture doesn't have. The moment you are afraid from culture, change the religion, boom. 
a slight wind will take that and destroy that artificial house. The last thing before I can end, inshallah, we have to identify priorities and our real issues when we are discussing this. Our issues right now from the collective, collective mindset is that Islam is maghloob, not ghalib. Islam is overpowered. We have 1.5 billion Muslims, but no one respects us in the dunya. Look at what's going on in Muslim countries, subhanAllah, collectively, whether they're Middle East or somewhere else. Our youth are not confident when they are sitting in social sciences classes. I know one person, a da'i, who spent 10 years in Medina learning about Islam, and the moment he went into one of the philosophy classes, he said, I was surrounded by doubts. So it's not necessarily lack of knowledge. It's about mindset also. When we are teaching ourselves and our kids how to respond to some of these questions, that Islam is not compatible with the modern day culture and so on and so forth, we should turn the table over. We have to be respectful, we have to be considerate, we have to consider the feelings of the questioner. But when someone asks you, uh, why Islam is so violent religion? What does Islam say about women rights? What does Islam say about terrorism? Instead of just changing the message, going into the apologetic, li ap apologetic style, be respectful, but ask them, uh, why are you asking this question to start with? I see a problem with this. Why do you always see victims in Ukraine, but terrorists in Palestine? There's a problem with your question, right? So you need to take out your lens of CNN and Fox and then see this getting a little blurry at your end. So you can turn the tables over to make them confident that there is a problem in your worldview also. But this requires a knowledge, inshallah, and I hope that parents can go back to community and they can, inshallah, attend the classes in the masajid, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.